a general overview of them. Um, I'll do kind of a summary. Uh, in this way, I'll, I'll do our summary backwards of how we did it in class. So, you're also going to have the energy. And then, you, your orbitals will always go in order. So, 1s, 2s, 2p like that. 2p has 3, but the 2s and the 1s only have one orbit. You're always going to bring two molecules in. So, I'll bring or two atoms in to make a molecule. 2s and 2p. Hi, welcome, take a seat. So, when you're doing your molecule, what you're going to do is put like atom A on this side, the other atom A. So when we do it, we're always going to have the same atom. And then A2 will be in the middle. Okay, that part's always going to be the same. And then for everything that's an S orbital, it will always have this sort of structure. Okay, the line that goes down represents the bonding orbital. So if you remember in the very beginning of class, we drew a little picture that looked like this. This is energy, and this is distance. Hey, you can just give it to somebody. Cool. Okay. And we have two competing factors. And when you add, this top factor has to do with repulsion. This is the anti-bonding. Up there, this is the bonding. When those two competing factors add up together, you get something that looks like that. So every bond, this middle line represents the bond, every bond, and the bond's going to happen right here at the lowest energy, has a bonding part and an anti-bonding part. So every bond that we're forming, so between these two 1s orbitals we're forming a bond, between those two bonds are uh, two orbitals, one the bonding orbital, this part, and the antibiotic. So you, it's always going to have two parts. So you see, you'll, uh, if you have two orbitals, you have two of these. Here you're going to have two. You have two of these. Here you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six atomic orbitals. So you see, we're going to see when I draw it, six here in the middle. Okay. So is that okay so far? Kind of okay. All right. So this 2s looks exactly the same. In fact, S's will always look like that. The P's, really, there's two choices. I'll just pick one to draw for now. And... What's going to happen, because there's six lines on the outside, there's going to be six on the inside. Notice all this that I'm drawing so far, I don't even need to know what the molecule is. Okay, so it's kind of irrelevant at this point what the molecule is. Let's also put the names down. If there's one line, that's a sigma. Okay, and this happens to be a sigma 1s because it's a 1s orbital. And the line that's higher is always the sigma star, the antibonding line. So antibonding is always higher energy. Notice it's higher energy in this picture too than the bonding. And so this likewise would be sigma 2s and sigma 2s star. Now class today I also drew the picture so I'll, I can draw the pictures for you also. The sigma 1s is when two s orbitals come together and they're both constructively interfering. Okay? where the sigma 1s star looks something more like that. Okay, welcome to seat right here. For the 2s, same thing.
it, it looks exactly the same. So where the bonding one is about the same face, I always draw them unshaded, but they can both be shaded as long as they're both the same face. Here, these two, a shade and unshade, represents opposite phases, like one's a crest, one's a trough, in our simple wave function. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, so then do we add, sorry, do we add the energy within it after we draw the shape? Um, yeah, the... Oh, do you write the resultant? Yeah. Uh, I usually encourage people not to do that, okay. because then they start drawing a lot of big blobs, okay. and it's hard to decipher what that is. <laughs> But yeah, you could do that. Your book does that. But they have artists, okay. right? And that's the difference. So since most of us aren't like professionals, uh, I just have you leave it, not adding them together. It's just easier to know what you're doing. Okay, then when you get up to the 2P, the one with the single line is the sigma. And that's the sigma 2P. And the one with two lines is pi 2p, and then when you go up here, pi 2p star, and sigma 2p star. So the star representing the antibody. Again, I don't know what, it's irrelevant what the atom is at this point. I'm still drawing, this picture that I'm drawing will be the same for every single one. Okay. Um, so now let me draw in the orbitals so you can see what those look like. Um, so these two P's, there's one that goes up and down for the P orbital. Remember, there's going to be three P orbitals, that's why there's three lines. There's one that goes towards you and away from you, so as you best try to draw one <laughs> going forward and backwards. Uh, okay, <laughs> and then there's one that goes right and left. So there's the three p orbitals. Now when you bring these together, the one that makes the sigma bond, or our sigma, I'll do a little summary over here. A sigma bond means if there's this atom here and an atom here, the bond occurs between the two atoms. So that's sigma. If it's a pi bond, and there's an atom here and an atom here, then the bond occurs up here and or down here. Okay, that's the difference between sigma and pi. So pi, you don't see any action in the middle. Sigma, you see all the action in the middle. Okay, so now when we go over here, a sigma bond means, you know, we want something to happen between. The only way you can get that to happen is if you take these two orbitals right here. So... See how in that case, the bond's happening in between the two centers. So that's what we call a sigma 2p. It's counter, uh, you know, arch nemesis, polar opposite would be if you draw that and just switch one of the phases. Like that. So this is anti-bonding because two opposite phases touch. This is bonding because two of the same phases touch. Uh, okay, for the pi 2p's, let's draw those two. Uh, so it goes for these two lines. It would be when you take either of the first two. So I take the very first ones and put them together. Like that. See how the same phases touch each other? That's going to be a pi bond, because the bond is happening above and below the center line. You can also do it when you take the ones that are both forward-backwards. A little hard to draw, unless you're very artistically inclined, but it's essentially the same thing, but point forward and backwards. <laughs> 